Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today, back to work over here on my blacksmithing forge that I have had been for a while and been kind of working on getting this thing going. I got a job coming up I need to be using this for, so we need to get this thing wrapped up. I have uh, previously worked on getting the forge itself kind of all put back together. I can't remember if we shared anything about the dust hood or not, but I had this custom made by a local sheet metal shop, a Smith's Metal Works here in Tifton, Georgia, where I live. Rod Smith, who's a third generation uh, sheet metal guy, uh, made this up for me from the pictures that I gave him from the catalogs to kind of match what the original would look like. Uh, turned out really nice. I'm real happy with this. But today what I want to do is start working on getting the blower put back on here, which is really kind of the last step uh, to getting this done. I had previously taken the blower apart uh, we uh, made a new gear to go into it that was uh, broken on the original one and it is now ready to reattach on here and we need to get it all plumbed up. So that's what we're going to be working on today. Let's get at it. All right, we are going to start by bolting this uh, blower to this arm that it mounts to here on the, the forge. Get that first one started. All right, let's tighten these up now. All right, I think we got that on there. Now we need to uh, get a handle on this blower, the original one has got some issues. Now I want to get that handle on there all the way. I'm going to tighten up this uh, set screw here. This handle just turns like such. There needs to be a handle put on it though. Right now there's nothing there. This is what was on it when I got it. Um, little homemade cobbled together handle. I think I can do better than that. Uh, let's see about making a custom handle to go on here. So this is the catalog picture that I have of this blower and uh, you can kind of see what we're working with here under the handle that we want to try to reproduce. Nothing fancy there at all. Uh, just basically a wooden handle, uh, this on a metal stem that goes up in there. Now you can see we got kind of a rounded end on this end uh, to kind of duplicate that. I'm just going to use a carriage bolt and that will be what I mount the whole thing on. Um, the shape's a little different, but I think it'll work fine in this application. And you can tell there's a little spacer on the back side. Uh, we'll just put a washer on that. And basically what I'm gonna do is we're gonna cut a piece of wood, drill a hole in it. We're gonna mount it on this, uh, on a carriage bolt. We'll put this in the wood lathe and turn it. Now, because I'm gonna wanna support it on the end, I'm gonna, I actually got a carriage bolt that's a little bit longer. I'm gonna put a center in that. This will just be sacrificial. We won't use this one in the actual one, but we'll use it for the turning purposes as a mandrel uh, to turn it on. So uh, there we go. That's kind of the game plan. As for the piece of wood I'm going to use, uh, this is some uh, fruit wood. This is actually some pear uh, that I had in my lumber rack that uh, has been drying for probably 15 years. I think I'm just going to cut a piece off of this on the bandsaw and that's what we'll actually make it out of. This uh, fruit wood is really hard, dense wood. It should hold up well uh, to this application. So anyway, there we go. Let me uh, get set up over here and we'll go turn that handle. So I've got this carriage bolt we're gonna use as a mandrel chucked up in the metal lathe here and we're just gonna put a center in that. So just got a uh, center here ahead and put that in the end and that'll help us uh, support this over on the wood lathe while we're turning it. All right, that should work. Over my wood cutting bandsaw, I've got a, a fence on here set about an inch and a half. I think I'm going to make it just a little bit wider just to give me a little bit of, a little bit of wiggle room there and we're going to go ahead and cut us out a blank here.
We'll just saw right down through this. And I'm going to cut it in the other direction. give me a fairly square blank to work with. Guys, I just drilled a um, hole through there on the drill press. I didn't show it, but my um, bolt will go through there like that. Uh, what I need to do now is get a hammer and just kind of hammer that carriage bolt in there and get it recessed in place. And then we'll put a uh, bolt nut on here and go put that on the lathe and this will just become a turning mandrel to turn this on. So let me get that driven in place and bolted together and I'll meet you guys back at the wood lathe. So we got our piece of wood mounted over here in the wood lathe and we're going to go ahead and start this process by just uh, using a gouge to just get this thing round, get it smoothed out. Wood turning is very different than turning on a metal aid. Very much just hand control here. I know a lot of machinists that I talk to have a really difficult time wrapping their mind around how you do this because you don't have the precision. It's more just kind of free flow. All right, so we got that pretty much round, uh, not quite 100%, but close enough that I can start working on my shape. We'll take a little spindle gouge here and we're gonna start kind of rounding over this end. is a little bit thicker than I want it to be over here, but I want to kind of start working on the uh, ends of these to kind of get them where they need to be. All right, I'm going to knock the total diameter down a little bit more. kind of working on that end and then this is going to kind of taper down to the center it gets a little bit thinner down here in this throat And that's not bad. A little bit of refinement in here, I think. I'm gonna kind of use a scraper here to smooth it up a little bit. I'm just going to take some sandpaper and sand it. And one handle. I like it. 
So we have our new handle here. I'm going to take out the uh, mandrel that we have with the center in the end. I'm going to put in a new um, carriage bolt here. And I'll tighten up when we get over to the lathe. We got our washer that's going to go on here to end. And somewhere I have a um, lock nut that we will put on there to lock this in place. So we'll put our handle in here. A little bit shorter um, bolt on it and this is a lock washer I have on the end so it should theoretically stay tight. I want it just tight enough where it'll kind of rotate in my hand as it's being turned and there we go. That ought to work. I think I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more. There we go. I like that. I will probably um, put a finish on that of some type, some uh, protection, but I'll do that here in a little bit after when I get through messing with it, where it'll have time to dry. Just a close up look at the handle there. I think it turned out just fine and uh, it ought to do the trick. So next on this project, I need to get a pipe to go from the blower down to the fire pot down here on the bottom. Uh, and there's multiple ways you can do this. I used to have a blacksmith set up years ago that just had a piece of flexible pipe. And I thought about using that. It'd be real simple to just go in there and put it in. But looking again at the catalog pictures and stuff that I had, originally there was a piece of solid galvanized pipe that basically went from down there up here. It was all one piece. It was a piece of bent pipe. Um, and so I'm trying to emulate that as close as I can. So what I've got is some three inch pipe here. This is actually exhaust pipe. Uh, this is mild steel. Um, Could have gone with stainless, but uh, the mild steel was what I was able to source locally without having to order something in. So we decided to go with that. And I've got a elbow here, 90 degree elbow that will go in here. And I've also got a coupler uh, that should hopefully fit up over this. I gotta do some grinding because someone welded on this in the past and there's a bead around it, but hopefully this should fit up over it. So it's basically, this is three inch outside diameter. This is three inch outside diameter. So this uh, coupler will flange out to fit up over the three inch pipe and hopefully will fit right up over there once we do a little uh, manipulating. And uh, the elbow has a, the, Flange, flanged in on one end, the other end we'll just have to weld it in place. I'll weld it all in place once we get it all where it needs to be, but uh, that's just what they had available was the one that had the flange on one side and not on the other. No big deal. Um, let's get in here and see what we can do to get this going. So hopefully you can see this kind of area where somebody welded on this and we need to get that down back to the original diameter. I'm just gonna use a grinder here and see if I can get this knocked out. Probably should have done this before, while we had this apart, but I didn't anticipate it at the time. I believe that we can kind of drive that up on there. Yeah. Like it. All right, we got to start. Uh, there's one piece on there. I think I'm gonna do is start down here at the bottom and kind of work my way up to that. So um, now there's a flange that bolts to the piece on the bottom. I got a piece of steel that we're just going to make a matching flange and then weld our uh, pipe onto that. So that'll be my next step is making a flange. So that flange is a little less than six and a half inches in diameter and it has a three inch hole in the center. I've got a three inch hole saw here that will cut that center out. We'll probably just cut the outside diameter out on the bandsaw. 
Now this is some 16 gauge steel, which is the same thickness as the uh, exhaust pipe material. So uh, that's just what I was available to. That was the thickest that I could get without getting up to like quarter inch or something locally. It's eight inches wide. Uh, let me get a Sharpie pin here. Four inches in in this direction and four inches in in this direction. Take a center punch and just punch that. Now that outside diameter was just a little less than three and a half. So half of three and a half is going to be inch and a half plus a quarter inch and three quarters. I'll flip this over. I'll put that in the one inch mark and there's inch and three quarters and it is just a little bit on the inside of that so i'm going to just go down a little bit this is just some dividers is that right no that's not right yeah ignore that one I, it's six and a half, which is going to be three and three quarters. Is that right? Six would be three, three, three and a quarter is what I need. Three and a quarter. Roughly right there. And that other circle is a boo boo. We're just going to ignore it. All right, I'm going to go to my bandsaw. We're going to cut that outside circle out. The inside circle, we will just use a hole saw uh, to cut it. So let me go to the bandsaw and we'll cut that out. We're over here at the do all bandsaw and I'm just going to cut this out real quick. Here at the drill press. I may have to go to the radial drill to do this. I'm not sure. Um, I've got this clamped down to a piece of wood that I can kind of hold on to, and we got it jacked up just to clearance for this uh, the vice grips here. Um, this may be a little bit too fast. This is as slow as this drill press will go. All right, we're in the center. Sorry if my arm's in the way, but it is what it is here, guys. Just fine. All right, I think we got it. So we got one giant washer cut out here. The top of this is cut off flat. I'll probably do that too, but I want to kind of figure out. Yeah, I can probably go ahead and do that. Let me get a sharpie. I'll mark that and go cut that off so that we have that reference there as well. Zoom 11. All right, guys, I've already got this kind of tacked into place and I, I wanted this to stick out a little bit. So I started out with up on some one by fours just to kind of give me a little bit of a step. This will fit up inside that piece over there. I got a hole in the table right here. I'm just going to kind of drop that down in there and uh, we're going to go ahead and try to weld this the rest of the way up. Um, let me get my welding hood and we'll go to it. Let me catch up where we're at here. I uh, just dropped this down into this flange, this hole that I got here. And because I had a little bit of warpage on that, I just took a piece of um, wood and kind of went around this and used this as an anvil to kind of flatten that back out. Worked pretty good. I also kind of ground the inside of that to make it line up a little bit better. The other thing I did is I clamped this with some uh, vice grips over on the flange and I marked 
where the three holes are that need to be uh, drilled out in this. And I went ahead and center punched those while I had it over here on this nice table to kind of use as an anvil. And I'm gonna drill those out and this should be ready to bolt right up in there. So this is the part that's gonna fit up in that flange on the bottom of the blower. I need to add seven inches to the top of this elbow. So we're gonna try TIG welding this together. I'm a little bit nervous about it. I'll just be honest with you. Again, TIG welding is not my um, forte, but the only way you get better is by practice. So uh, we're gonna be practicing here. Probably should have practiced a long time ago. Oh well, it's one of these skills that I don't do it often enough to really get good at it. But I do it often enough that I need to get good at it. I'm going to start by just kind of tacking this in a couple of places. And uh, once I get it kind of where I want it, we'll go all the way around the park. Flip it over. All right, we're gonna do it for real now. Well, it's not stacked dimes, but it looks prettier than the last one we did. I'm gonna take this over to the uh, belt sander and uh, see if I can do a little massaging on that. And I think it'll be fine. All right. Well guys, after some grinding, doesn't look too bad. I can live with that. Let's see if we can put all the stuff together now. That's gonna probably be where it gets fun. All right, guys, I uh, knocked this flange on over there on the device. I didn't get it on camera. I'm going to see if I can get this one up on here. And now i got to bend this down. All right, guys, I think I got it fitting pretty decent here. In retrospect, I wish that I had made this piece about an inch longer than what I did. <sighs> I should have cut it long and then cut it to length after I got everything kind of assembled, but uh, I wasn't smart enough to do that. So we got to deal with it here. No big deal. What I'm going to do is we're just going to weld this on. Uh, this coupler will stay. I'm going to probably just leave this one loose fitting on there. Uh, I mean, it's plenty tight enough as it is but and that will allow it to where there's still some adjustment in here, but I'm gonna, I think, take all this apart and we're gonna weld this in place over here. At least, if nothing else, just tack it in place a couple places. I think I also wanna try to weld up the uh, gap up here where the pipe should be going up in there farther, uh, just so we don't get any, lose any air up in there. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna take it apart now and we'll do exactly that. I'm gonna mark it with my Sharpie pen exactly where it goes and uh, we'll weld it in place. And I got that welded on and grounded down. It actually welded pretty nicely. I didn't have to do a whole lot of grinding on it. I did weld up those gaps in there. Still got some gaps up here, but I'm thinking I might put something around this with a strap to kind of just clamp it. Uh, that'll probably cover that up, but I'm happy with how that looks. I think it's gonna be good. I'm gonna get some of my high heat black spray paint, paint that, and I think we'll have this knocked out. All right, I got some paint on that. The shiny stuff is just where it hasn't dried yet. It'll come out to this kind of matte finish uh, when it completely dries. 
but I'm um, going ahead and shooting this right now. But uh, happy with that. I think we're going to be good. And just like that, I think we're ready to go. Got my air blowing up through here just like we need. I, we're really probably ready to build a fire in this thing. I think one thing I do want to do is I'm going to get some fire brick material and kind of fill this gap in here. Uh, that's the way this is built with this is kind of up a little bit more and I'll probably get some uh, fire cement and kind of cement that in. I don't want to put the whole bottom in, but I do want to just kind of keep the coal from getting up underneath uh, that ledge there. Uh, I also need, there's a little uh, bracket that kind of mounts on here, the leg on it that you can prop out to help hold material up. Once I start blacksmithing, I can put that in there and get that going uh, as well, but that's coming down the road. Doesn't need it to start off with, but we're about ready to use this and uh, I got a job. I need to get done with it. So uh, we're going to be seeing this thing in action here very soon. I think we're ready to put a fire in here other than the fire brick. And I'll probably do that off camera just for the sake of time. Guys, with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And a big, huge thank you to those who subscribe to the channel, as well as those who support the channel financially through Patreon and PayPal, etc. It really enables me to be able to take the time to shoot the videos, edit the videos, and everything else that goes along with it. Guys, with that, we'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.